There we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am your host, Jinx, and joined, as always, by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. Uh, we normally start off with community updates from Zach, but he is not into or he's not in the call today. So we are going to. What the hell is C voice? I have no idea. All right. So I'm going to read off his updates for him. Uh, Retro PGF ends in two days. Get your applications in if you've done any work on Pocket. Uh, and I am dropping uh, the full text of this along with his links in the sidebar. So uh, if you need them, look there. Uh, all grants need to do their EO, uh, end of month reports in Karma Gap Forum by June 1. Tell us uh, how you did to make sure that you're getting paid for next month. Uh, there is updated pocket marketing information in the den. There's a link to that, um, or pass to ads if she's on the call. Well, uh, I love it when they include the screen direction, uh, in the text itself. Uh, but I don't see ads. So, ha, huh, I read it myself. Uh, office hours later today, four to six. I think this is becoming a, a really useful workshopping session, uh, for people who need like just an absolutely unmitigated off the leash place to uh, come ask what you think might be dumb questions or bounce wild ideas off or uh, anything along that line. And uh, the builders call is tomorrow. So uh, if you are a builder and or interested in the builders, then um, please uh, check that out. Peter, can you tell me what the C voice thing is? You're like freaking me out, man. Sorry, we're uh, we're testing a new a new bot that transcribes as well as records the meetings. Just FYI. Oh, got it. Okay. And now that's filling up the chat with everything you were saying. Hmm. Perhaps not useful right now, or in that configuration. Um, okay. Then let's go to. Um, Let's go to gateway updates because we're going to be going to uh, the foundation as soon as we clear that. So, Fred, any gateway updates this week? Uh, nothing major to report. Beautiful. And uh, developer now already said uh, they have no updates this week. Porters or uh, yeah, I don't see Blade Porter. You guys on here? Raid Guild Sasquatch. There you are. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Um, just two quick ones. Uh, the Tyco mainnet was allow listed yesterday. Um, they went live on, I believe, Monday. Um, and then our gateway is going to be live on Friday. Um, so I know there's some other, there's some people here that are supporting <clears throat> Tyco directly. And so we should start seeing relays to them. And then once Porter's launches, um, we expect to see Tyco traffic directed to us. So yeah, that's exciting. Um, and we'll talk more about that on the Builder Call tomorrow. Awesome. Well, that's uh, that is really good to hear. I know there's there's been a lot of a conversation, like especially in my Telegram channels, about uh, wanting to see uh, the new gateways in action or to see their contributions to um, network relay counts and such. So many many eyes following along as you guys move forward. Uh, any other gateway updates that? we need to talk about uh ramiro do you guys have any updates i'll take that as a no and uh shane yeah any protocol updates yeah uh actually an exciting week for us so uh public testnet uh launched um anyone can join as a uh supplier or as a gateway uh, and start sending relays through the network. Um, yeah, really the goal is to uh, allow folks to start onboarding, start learning about uh, how the documentation is with uh, deploying suppliers and deploying gateways. Um, uh, and then uh, on the development side, while basically uh, the public testnet is live and, and folks are onboarding, the uh, development uh, continues. Uh, and the idea is uh, the development that's happening now 
will be able to be uh, re-released with, uh, or will be able to be released with a new version uh, of testnet, which we then call alpha two. So we basically have three alpha phases of testnet and each one uh, brings more features uh, to it. And so uh, the current things that the team's working on to lead up to alpha, uh, alpha testnet phase two, uh, alpha two would be um, they're working on relay mining, which is uh, very important to to get that uh, fully integrated into the protocol. So this is where, as uh, demand grows, um, how uh, how they or as demand grows, how the protocol uh, chooses to um, verify the work that nodes have done uh, changes, and it's it's kind of built. Uh, brilliantly as a similar scale to how Bitcoin mining difficulty works, where as uh, there's more going on on the network, uh, there's less uh, uh, there, there there's less need for verification of every single part that uh, every single work that a supplier did, but do it in a probabilistic fashion to where if anyone tries to game, it's a huge risk and they could lose it all. Uh, and so it's a really cool, really brilliant way of utilizing what's in Bitcoin and uh, applying it to to relays, which is why it's called relay mining. Anyways, little uh, little description for you there, but uh, that's one of the main focuses right now is is working on relay mining um, and uh, finishing up some claim and proofs, uh, uh, some of the claim and proof parameters as well. Um, and then uh, the other the other thing that's also going to be relevant for builders is the uh, SDK is being separated from the talked role um, uh, repo. So it's actually going to sit as its own repo, and that will make it easier for people to do all sorts of integrations, whether on the supplier side or on the gateway side, um, into the protocol, because we'll have a dedicated uh, SDK for it. So uh, anyways, that's all the things that are currently going on right now, um, but definitely want to encourage folks to jump on the testnet. Uh, it's it's good documentation, uh, just getting up and running uh, should be relatively straightforward process. And if there's any issues, we want to hear about it. We want to hear about uh, uh, if the documentation needs to be improved or if uh, tooling isn't working as expected. We want to hear it all. So definitely want to encourage folks, this is the time to start participating. Um, and we have an announcement, Oshansky put in an announcement earlier this week. Uh, on Monday, actually, that has all the information to to start digging in. So very important that folks uh, that want to get in and start understanding how Shannon is going to work and how it's going to look on a resource side with suppliers and gateways and things like that. This is the start of it, uh, of uh, getting into all that. So check it out. Uh, check out that announcement. Jump into the local testnet. Uh, we got a faucet and we got a explorer. So it's uh, relatively simple for folks to start going uh, on your own and see things happening. All right. Uh, that's basically it on the protocol side. Beautiful. Thanks, sir. And uh, any uh, relevant links to that, please uh, do feel free to drop them in the sidebar chat. All right, so at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Dermot, who's going to talk a little bit more about uh, some governance stuff since the previous uh, creds proposal. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Jinx. Uh, just looking to share my screen. Cool. Is that working? Uh, it says closed stream. The stream has ended. Okay, so that is not successful. Oh, here we go, one sec. Sorry about this. Um, it looks like I need to restart the app and come back. Um, sure. I'll try and add it, but it would be great. Um, if anyone else can DNF and yourself, James can help uh, prompt the conversation in the meantime. And, and really, this is follow up from Ben's conversation. Right. Yeah, after, absolutely. Cool. Feel free to bounce in and out. Does anybody have any uh, highlights they want to share in the meantime while we wait for Dermot to get back and set up?
Or not. And Dermot's back. And he's gone again. Anybody listening to this recording after the fact is going to be like, what is going on? Back again. And gone again. This is a truly exciting Discord uh, experience. Working now. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Bad start. Um, now working. Beautiful. Got it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, um, yeah. And now your audio is bouncing in and out. Not sure what happened, Dermot, but I'm not hearing anymore. And really, the aim with these is to pull out what we really care about, and I guess on a similar fashion, what we don't care about. And and particularly as we do believe it's important that we have a modular system that can evolve and adapt over time, that these principles don't just go out of date in three, four months, right? They do remain true to what we think is the essence of our system. And then, of course, the proposal and plan after this is to then, based on what we agree on, are these principles after discussion on today's call. Ben is going to be around on the office hours later. He's also planning to host an additional call, I think, early next week to then um, post what are the kind of updated principles along with proposed updated um, approach to creds. Um, and so, yeah, so this is really to kickstart the discussion to hear some reactions from people, hear some thoughts, uh, what people agree with, um, any doubts and concerns. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll kind of pause there. I think um, everyone has what's on the screen to, to work off, and I just, yeah, would love to hear some people's thoughts and, yeah, hear whatever everyone has to say. Come off mute and drop your opinion. I think one of the things that wasn't well understood in the previous uh, iteration of the proposal was the limitation of the um, smaller voter classes. Uh, it was difficult, I think, to parse that 20% of um, voting being assigned to a different class of citizens uh, represented a cap on the total influence of that voting block. Uh, I think that mm. that wasn't really well understood until later on. Yeah, no, for sure. I, th I think um, in, in hindsight, obviously, despite the, the long process, not having separated everything into its constituent parts and everyone understanding the whole and the reasons for the whole, as well as the effective goals, as well as uh, Guess what we might actually put into the side and clear mistake in that side. So yeah, that, that is really the reason for this process is uh, to go back to first principles, what do we actually align on? And from there, if we do agree on all or most stories for some of these, we can we can build out a system that reflects that. And um and whatever we get to, the plan is then to break the future votes into its constituent parts as well. So there will be kind of a system around um yeah, who gets to vote, how we get to vote, and uh, what the kind of enabling technology is to achieve that.
So if I could talk to you with the first one, if that's helpful. And yeah, I guess Jinx and anyone else, please um, do jump in. Um, the first principle is really to talk about really what we've always had in Pockets Governance System and, and what the proposed crowd system is trying to achieve as well, is that we're not a plutocratic system. We aren't trying to um, just give power to those with the most money. And those who just came first or those early insiders, we um, we want our governance power to be in the hands of the most knowledgeable and engaged stakeholders. And, and then with that in mind, we also don't just want those who are really knowledgeable and engaged to be able to delegate that out. Um, we want directly engaged stakeholders because that's another filter for us to show your skill again, to show that you care. And that's uh, always been part of Pockets government system today. There have been many other systems that end up using delegation features to kind of overcome some of their issues or otherwise. But um, this is kind of bringing out some of those points around direct voting, kind of a meritocratic system, and that there's some kind of reputational element to gaining governance power within Pocket. And silence can be golden, so please do um, feel free to. If you're, I, I, I can't actually. If I'm, while I'm looking at the screen, I can't look at the comments. So, um, but feel free to raise comments in the in the chat, and um, someone can read them out um, if if you don't want to unmute. But um, otherwise, I'll kind of move on to the second principle, which I, I was going to ask. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, please do. Great. Oh, so um, this is great. So is, is is the governance principle sort of rolling out now or kind of where is pocket on this? You know, I love the idea of that, you know, getting more direct um, engagement of people, so, you know, rather than delegation. Um, but it's always hard because people, it's kind of like one of those things, it's like paying your taxes. I hate to say that, but you know what I mean? Like some people like voting and some people don't. So is there some sort of thoughts from the foundation of kind of like how to, I don't want to say gamify it, but how to make it easier or fun for to participate? Yeah, that's a good question. I think with these design principles, the, the goal is to, to capture the essence of what we what the original intention of the governance system was we have in pocket and, and, and where we want to go. So it is that future proof system. So I think all of these principles should ring true with what we have, or at least what we intend to have today, because obviously there are some some issues with the current system um, that kind of grew over time. I think it's a good question around delegation or direct voting. Um, and, and I guess a good example is, depending on how you want to count, we have, I don't know, is there 15,000 or so on our Discord? Um, there are 15,000 or so nodes. Obviously, not, they're not all just one individual node runner. Um, there's thousands in Telegram, but actually the number of voters we have today was roughly 60. And I would argue, I think many would too, that having a a little bit more friction, um, showing you have more skin in the game to get a vote pocket, and the fact that those with that governance power have been voting directly on behalf of their own interests, even if they are often part of a, a different organization, a collective, have been really helpful for Pocket. I think we to a much more engaged and participatory and even impact driven than ecosystems and others. So yeah, I think I would certainly be wary of of losing that because if you start to move into a delegated system, the delegates become formal, you know, full-time politicians or actually to be frank in what we've seen in Web3 is part-time politicians that often have 10 to 20 or however many number of um, of delegates. I remember one time in the, I think in 2021 in the bull market, I remember one DAO, uh, apparent luminary boasting of being part of 100 DAOs and thinking that's a brag. And for me, it just looked like idiocy and everything that was wrong with DAOs. So um, I, I think we are leaning into the right um, modal by thinking about direct voting. I think there is, um, but also I think you're also pointing out around representation and access and UX, which I think are actually slightly different questions, but certainly important for growing the, the voting franchise for sure. I've talked about, you know, my opinion that a representative model might be better for us. And, and when I first brought the topic up a couple of years back, 
the high percentage of voting participation was pointed to as as evidence that this wasn't needed. I think looking at our percentages now, we've seen a, a fairly precipitous drop uh, in total percentage participation since then. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a good one. I, I think I think that one is um a twofold issue i think the fact that our pocket is kind of one and done you have done something impactful you've gone through the voting pathway once um you get that power forever um i think that is a mistake and that should be cleared up um because you end up with people who sometimes roughly three plus years ago did something, cared about pocket, were involved, and then they have a vote. So I think yeah, the voter participation levels, actually, that can lead to some kind of apathy and, oh, do people not care anymore? When actually, if you look at it, in the last I think, 18 months, two years, I think the most number of votes we've ever had is 36, 37, something like that. So I think that probably is, I think those other 23 are effectively dead to pocket. Um, they either have lost their votes, lost their wallets, and they don't care about pocket, they've moved on, they're too busy. Um, so I think it's wrong for them to be counted as part of our our voting franchise. So um, I think that's one element, that's the dynamic element. I think the representation element, um, again, I think when we have a more modular system that represents our full breadth of stakeholders, we can start to do more interesting things in the future. And I think, um, I don't know if you've jammed with with Jack or Ben or anyone else on this, but um, it's definitely a fun one to do over a drink as well. You really talk about where this could go to. I think a lot of the governors, I'll count myself amongst them, are really excited by the use of reputation. Um, and I think a lot of people outside of crypto are as well when they think about what you can do on fully digital rails. However, that is a difficult, because we you know reputation can be gained. But if we start to build out these on-chain reputations of people who've delivered impact in different ways, maybe super technical you are, even vouched by a whole bunch of other interesting people who have a strong reputation themselves, you can start to maybe give them stronger voting power in certain on certain votes. And maybe this is seen as a lower stake vote for some reason. So maybe actually a few people with high reputation vote that through. So you can actually push things through optimistically as well as maybe boosting the voting power of certain voters and it relates to um, maybe interesting how you can switch the system once you do have a kind of a key reputational um, base and I guess kind of a, a system that tracks that. Um, but I'd be wary of just giving up, given we have such a small voting base already to reduce that even further, I think would be a mistake. I think it would be important for us to, to expand, realize our key stakeholders, make that dynamic um create some kind of a balance uh, ensure that's scalable as our community grows and it's easier for people to claim votes so we don't have one stakeholder dominating by uh any kind of ridiculous means or having too much power because i think that would be a mistake as well and then i think we can start to think about is this an issue and i guess i always go back to the and principle of even when you have one mistake or kind of a breach of policy you should never um, implement a new policy to fix it because that's actually where you end up with a bloated bureaucracy. So it's, uh, I think it's, um, I forget the name, uh, Dylan Greer talks about this a lot. It's only when you have multiple breaches of a same, similar policy, you, you now realize this is a pattern and it should, something should be introduced to include it. But, you know, humans are fallible, we'll all make mistakes, but often there are one offs. So it's important not to kind of base your laws or regulations or policies based on, on one offs. So I guess for now it's not a problem, but I, I do think it's a good question that we should be aware of. And ideally we can adapt. Courses for courses in terms of different votes and uh, different kind of, I guess, stakes at, uh, at risk. Beautiful. Yeah, I guess I'm happy to keep that thing and please jump in. Um, so, yeah, I guess the first system is who gets to vote broadly around like the kind of the, the way in which you vote um, and like, I guess, maybe why they should get a vote. You have some reputation, you're delivering impact. Um, this is based on merit that it should be direct. Um, and the second one is actually, okay, we understand the types of people, but actually, what does that actually look like? Um, and for us, I think it's clear that we have obvious stakeholders. We have some direct protocol stakeholders. We have our, our node operators, our validators, our 
our gateways. Um, we then have the pocket holders themselves who also are components of their operation. We'll also maybe provide on any of our pools across any of the chains we end up on, or they're actually powering um, the node operators and gateways themselves because they're they're loaning or delegating their own stakes. So thinking deeply around who our stakeholders are and whether they should get a vote or not and why is important. And once we think about that, it should be balanced, right? So maybe it is correct that one stakeholder class has do this reacts more power because they are that much more important or they need more of a say and so on and so forth. Um, and that's a really important question to have. And I think that's looking back with the last um, about not separating out that question was obviously a mistake. I think that we should have aligned more on the kind of components of the system and then actually our stakeholders. And then once we realize who our stakeholders are and what the system looks like, then have a debate around Okay, maybe stakers, if they should be represented, maybe they should only get 5% or 10% or whatever that was. And then connected to the ideas of it being balanced and representational, we cannot just think about pocket today. We need to think about what pocket looks like in three, six, 12 months. And it's helpful to sometimes think about what pocket look at in five years, just so you can really see how um, the edge cases and how things can break. And so it really is capture resistant, but it's um, it's also important to be kind of realistic and stay kind of tethered to reality and be ready to adapt. So um, thinking about what happens when we have 10x more gateways um, or when every single node operator get a vote, what that looks like um, and what impact that could have, I think are important questions as we think about the system we want to have a pocket because um, we have a pretty unique system. As soon as we move to a I think it's a scalable system and rails, um, I think we'll see many more people with votes um, who the fortunes could get out of the way. Your audio has been kind of getting in and out muddled, just FYI. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Turn off my headphones if that helps. Beauty. Beauty. Oh, I, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on what we said so far, but the last part is the least exciting, really, but actually it, it's obviously super impactful in terms of actually building to a new stack. Um, as we sometimes used to joke, the the old stack was a Jack with a, a Discord <laughs> and a Discord channel. Um, Jack with a UI in front, manually updating and approving and so on and so forth. Um, but even to go back to the original governance thesis, the lean governance thesis that Jack put out sometime, I think, in maybe late 2020, um, I think I don't have the exact quote, but it's something like modular governance is future proof, I think is the, is, is it, is the exact line. Um, and that's the idea that systems change, they stop to, you know, voting systems can stop to maintained anymore or the needs of the community can change over time um so it's important that you can switch out the different components um that you can tune the parameters um you're not fully reliant on just any one provider so um instead of being fully monolithic we can actually have a modular system that we can adapt and evolve one part instead of having to to change and adapt the whole um and that's really the whole technical upgrade that we're looking to achieve but really that's great and that's exciting, but it's it should all be in uh, service of, of of the system itself in terms of what we want to achieve in terms of uh, who gets to vote, um, what voting power they get, and, uh, and all of that good stuff. So, so if there's any immediate thoughts to that, I think there is um, one point to maybe make on the scalable point, which I think is um, interesting, but also scary to some extent as we move to a more scalable rails. Um, in terms of the system that we've proposed, we do believe friction is important, kind of having that kind of a digital bouncer at the door to keep the quality of the people inside. And that's making sure that you care about us and our mission and you have enough knowledge. Um, that's our kind of citizenship test that we've talked about. Um, and then 
But the issue is once you're inside the door and you've proved you have some kind of impact or uh, you deserve to get a vote, as it's on digital rails now and actually going to be a much slicker and easier to use the UX, you can see how our proportions in our community can get really out of hand, particularly if we just stayed with the current system of one person, one vote for every stakeholder. You can you can think about it, there could be thousands of nodes potentially. Um, and yes, there is civil protection, so maybe that's actually hundreds. But uh, particularly as with, with Shannon and the, the move to Max Chains equal to one, we want a lot more independent node operators to come for every single chain of the 60, 70, Products, it supports, and so if we are saying that they just need to prove that they're a node runner, as the current kind of um, map in Morse is, that could really get out of hand really quickly. Could completely swamp the maybe what 30, 40, 50, even slightly less, maybe active builders we have, and certainly the, I guess currently we have three live. I guess that would be four or five by the end of the week with chain stack and uh, orders. At six, it would depth down, but really, um, even at scale, you'd assume you'd look to have tens of gateways. Um, but most of that traffic will still largely, even if we have 100 plus gateways, you'd assume at least 80% of that traffic will still come from probably 10 ish. Um, so you can see how things can get really out of whack if we don't actually put some guardrails around our kind of stakeholders and how much power and whether they should be capped or not. So I guess that's one of the important things that we think about representation and balance and uh, scale and capture resistant checks. So, so I think please obviously interrupt, jump in with any thoughts. Um, there is an office hours today and he would love to chat to you, whether that's one person or many. Um, Jam, last questions, last thoughts. Please, at any time, post your questions, thoughts, and feedback in the forum. And yes, there'll be a final design session on Tuesday in Discord. Details on that to be followed soon. That'll be uh, Ben's kind of time zone. And the aim to have a proposal or proposal as I expect it to be broken down to two or three separate proposals uh, next Thursday and then have a vote the week after, after a bit of discussion. So, Thank you all for your time. Beautiful. I appreciate your time as well. It's uh, I know we've had uh, some significant discussions around this, um, and and there's a, a fairly wide breadth of thought on it, I think. But um, does anybody have any additional thoughts they'd like to share now? <laughs> okay reasonable um i i do again encourage anyone who you know if you have uh some thoughts that you are thinking to yourself that uh aren't well formed enough for this kind of discussion or or you know just need to chew on a little bit more um definitely check out that open office hours call today from four to six it really is just casual as hell well, we're at uh, 40 past right now, getting up close to the top of the hour. And does anybody have another topic they'd like to discuss before we break for the day? Going what? Yeah, just want to put a plug in for our uh, or our uh, uh, builders call tomorrow. Um, so uh, yeah, in terms of what we're going to be uh, looking into, um, uh, still talking with the team on what exactly we want to, uh, what exactly uh, the agenda is going to fully be. But uh, I do expect to uh, provide some more clarity on uh, some of the tokenomics work that at least I've been working on. Um, and uh, 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 hopefully having a uh, a version of a model that uh, uh, that I can at least show kind of the the general results of different market uh, situations. So 
that's that's partially the goal. We'll see. I'm 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 working like mad to get this uh, uh, to get everything ship shape and and ready to communicate. Yeah. So, uh, but regardless, um, if uh, if I'm able to to touch on that a little bit tomorrow. Uh, or not, we do have a uh, builders call, which will be going over, uh, yeah, uh, things that are relevant to builders and uh, people who want a deeper understanding of uh, things that are happening. Excellent. Well, thank you, sir. Well, I'll be, uh, I have that on my calendar. It is uh, 2 p.m. EST. So I will be uh, looking to talk to y'all then. Any other final thoughts? I want to call out for any node runners or anybody involved in a gateway that's willing to help us with a short write-up. Uh, there's a bounty in the bounties channel, but the, the main goal is to just generate some content around uh, nodes and um, gateways that's simple to understand and that has a few keywords so that we can boost the site SEO for yeah for for those specific topics so just either reach out to me or just jump into that channel uh there's a small bounty attached and uh, they're, they're pretty short they shouldn't take more than uh an hour or two to write thank you awesome you got it i know uh, zatar and a few other folks have worked on uh, creating documentation type stuff before All right. Well, if there's no other jump ins, we'll call it there for the day. We will see y'all same channel, same time next week, and uh, also later this afternoon for the office hours call. So thanks, everyone.